G'day guys, Josh here. Today I want to share a quick tutorial on using the NSXML parser to parse XML and make an array of objects in Objective-C. I'll be using an iPhone master detail template to show the array in a table view. So as you can see here, I've already made a project called a parser demo and I've made a master view um, storyboard that just has a title and a subtitle and when you tap on the cell, it'll show you the details of the food item. So next, let's take a look at our XML file. So here, as you can see, we've got a few entries and it's basically a menu with food items. And each food item has a name, a price, a description and calories. So first of all, let's make the model for, for making the Objective-C model for food, a food item. So if I do a new Objective-C class here, and I'm just going to call it food, subclass of NS object, and add it to the project. And if I go into the header here, I'll just open this inspector, get the M file. Okay, so we're ready to go. Okay, so first of all, we want to make a few properties for the class. So I want to make a property NS string. This is going to be the name. And I have another one, which is a double for the price. The next one's going to be an NS string description. And the last one is going to be an integer for calories. Okay. We also need a custom init method. I'm going to call it init with name. It's going to be an NS string name price int price description NS string description. And the last one is calories, which is an integer calories. And sorry, that price should be a double there. Okay. And I'll just space that out a bit nicer. That's better. Okay, so that's done with the header. Now let's go to the implementation. I'm going to write my init method. And we're going to do a, a basic init here, super init, if self do stuff and return self. So in the if statement here, I'm just going to say self.name equals name, self.price equals price, self dot description equals description and self dot calories equals calories okay so that's all for our init method and actually that's all for our class that's all we need okay so now we need something to actually parse the XML and make these food items so I'm gonna make another class Objective C class, and this one's going to be called a food parser, and also a subclass of NS object. Going to put it in the main project there, and okay, so we got our food parser dot h, and I'll just get the food parser dot m. Okay, so in this class. We want to have a property, which is an NS mutable array. And this is going to be the food array. So we're going to give it a food array. And this class is going to parse the XML, build some food items and put them back into this array. I'm also going to have an ID, an init, sorry, init with array. 
and it's going to be an NS mutable array, as you can probably guess. I'm going to call it food array. Okay, and it's going to have one other method, which is parse XML file. Okay, so this method is the magic one. This is actually going to start the parser and do all the building and then add them to the array. Okay, so over in my implementation, I want to, first of all, I'm going to import the food object header. And I want to add some private properties here. So I'm going to make an interface extension, call it uh, food parser. And in here, I'm going to have a few properties. So I'm going to have, first of all, an NSXML parser, call it parser. And I'm also going to have an at property NS string, which is called an element. So this is going to be significant later, but I'll come back to that. Okay, I also want some food properties. These are going to be the properties of the food item and they're just going to be temporary variables that the parser is going to store and when it's, fi it's finished gathering all of these properties it's going to make a new food item with these, prop with these properties. So if I just go back to my food.h I'm just going to grab these very, these properties and just throw them in there. But I'm going to call this current name current price current description and current calories. Okay, so let's get into the implementation. I want to make my I want to do my init with array method, which is going to be fairly basic. Super init and if self, then self dot food array equals food array. Okay, and return self. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, now I'm going to do the parse XML file and in here we need to do a few things first of all we need to get the path to the XML file and to do that we're going to get an NS URL and I'm going to call it XML path and it's to get that we're going to do NS bundle main bundle URL for resource with extension so the resource is the name of the XML file, which in this case is menu, and the extension is going to be XML, obviously. Okay, there we go. I'll just put that on a new line. Okay, so now that we've got the XML path, we want to out initialize the uh, parser of this class. So I'm going to say self.parser equals NS XML parser alloc init with contents of URL and I'm going to give it the URL we just created, XML parser. Okay, so now that we have a parser, we need to set its delegate. And that's pretty simple. We're just going to say self.parser.delegate equals self. And I should add up here that this class should implement the NS XML parser delegate protocol. That one's important, which will hopefully get rid of this warning. Yep. Okay. So I should add that the NS XML parser is a SAX parser, SAX parser. And what it does is it parses the XML once. 
And as it's parsing, it'll fire these methods off to its delegate. So its delegate is this class we're building right now. So let's have a look at the methods that we need to implement. So I'm just going to go to the parser delegate reference here. Okay, so you can see there's a bunch of methods here and the ones we're interested in is did start element, did end element, and found characters. So let's have a look at did start element. We'll just grab that one. Oops. Just grab that one. Okay. So put that in there. We'll just tab this out to make it a bit nicer. Okay. This is a massive, massive method. There's a lot of variables here, but the only thing that we're really interested in is the element name. So I'm just gonna say self.element equals element name. So when the parser starts an element, as in starts a tag, so if we go back to the, um, if we go back to the XML file here, when it starts a tag, like food or name, the element name is going to be food or name, okay? And then we're just gonna store that in the element variable. And this is gonna come in handy later. So, now that we've got the element name, we want to implement the found characters method. So if I go here, found characters, okay, I'll grab that. Okay, so with the found characters, this is gonna be called every time the parser finds some characters inside a tag. So what we need to do is we need to check for the particular elements we're looking for. So we're looking for name, price, description, and calories. So in this method, we're going to look for the element name, and we're gonna see if it's equal to name. Then we want to say self.currentName equals string. So the string is the characters that it's found inside the element. Okay, else, and we pretty much have to do this for every every uh, tag that we're looking for. Else if price, then we're gonna set the current price to the string dot double value, because we need it to be a double. Okay, and Let's do two more of those. The next one is description. And we're gonna say self dot description, current description equals string, because it's a string already. And the last one is calories. If it's equal to calories, then we're gonna say self dot current, current calories equals string dot int value, because it's an integer. Okay, that's great. So we've started an element, we've got the characters. Now we need to handle going to the next element, which is where the did end element method comes in. So we're gonna grab that one, throw it in there, I'll just clean it up. Okay, again, this is, has quite a few variables, so you can ignore most of those. Um, the only thing we're really interested in is the element name. And we wanna check if we're ending the food tag. So if you look at the XML again, we have an ending food tag here. So if we find a closing food tag, we want to make a new food object and add it to the array. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to say if the element name is equal to string food, 
meaning we've found a food tag and it's ending that, then we want to say, we want to say, uh, we'll make a new food, call it this food. And we're going to use our custom init method that we wrote before. So food alloc init with name uh, self dot current name price self dot current price description self dot current description and calorie self dot current calories okay perfect so clean that up okay so we've made a new food item with the elements with the the characters or the information that we've found in the XML file. Okay, so now that we've done that, we want to add it to the array. So, as you can imagine, self.food array, add object, and we'll give it this food. Okay, great, fantastic, super easy. So, now we want to make sure that we're not, our element, the class's element, is not still the same. We're just going to set our self.element to equal nil. So it'll reset it ready for the next element. So that's basically the life cycle of the parser. We're going to find an element and we're just going to store that. And then we're going to parse it and make sure we get the name, price, description and calories. And then once we've finished that and we've found a closing food tag, we're just going to make a new uh, food item with that details, add it to the array, set the element to nil. Okay. So if we go back to our master view controller, which is where we have our array, I'll just get, get rid of that. Okay, I'm just gonna change this because I called that um, food parser. And I'm gonna change these also, food parser. In there, food parser. Okay, and by rights, uh, if I go back to my, that looks all good. If I go to my detail view controller, everything looks good there. Okay, let's see if we can run it. Ah, sorry, okay, we haven't added the XML file. So let's add that, we'll just drag it in here and copy it to the, oh, sorry, copy it to the, um, the project, okay. Now that we have the XML, we should be in business. Let's run that. And we didn't get anything, so that's fantastic. Let's have a look at what's going on. Okay, so I found the problem, a uh, pretty important step. In the parse XML file method, make sure you say self.parser parse. So that'll actually start the parser. That'll start the parsing process. So. If I go back and run this project, you can see that we've parsed the XML and added some items to our table view. So if you click on an item, you can see the description there. And that's all there is to it. So if you have any questions, have any comments, please uh, put them in the comments section. If you'd like me to do any other tutorials, let me know and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.